welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I would like to review the Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. Now, this one that I have in front of me is their block. That means that it is bound on all four edges with just a small slit in the top that you can slip a palette knife in and slice off the top sheet. But this exact paper is also available in pads as well as full sheets. Um, so that this review will be um, inclusive of all those formats because the paper inside is all the same. Really quickly before we get started I'd like to remind everybody to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos because it really helps out my channel and if you have any suggestions for other types of videos that you'd like to see be sure to leave that down below for me as well. Now off to the side I do have some notes so that I can stay on point but what you can expect to see in this video is we're going to be talking about the quality of the paper itself, we're going to be talking about price, availability, the surface texture, the performance of the paper, some of the claims that the company makes, drying time, layers, all that type of information will be available in this video for you. And I'm also going to be providing you a quick demonstration that I did on this paper as well as a comparison to a cold press paper. So. If you're interested in these gingerbread cookies, I recently did film a full tutorial and that's already posted on my channel. So if you're interested, I'll link that up and you can see this paper in action. But I did these gingerbread cookies on this hot press paper. Additionally, if you're interested, I did recently do a review on their rough press watercolor paper as well. So you can go and check that out if you're interested. I'll link that up as well as leave a link in the description box below for it. But let's go ahead and get right on into this. Now I'll insert a close up of this paper's texture so that you can see it of course. I happen to have the 10 by 14 size available but I did want to note that in the blocks and I think in the pads now they've also upgraded to providing you an 11 by 14 inch which is the American standard sizing. Um, if you wanted to take any artwork that you created on these papers whether it's the cold press, rough press, whatever and you have their 10 by 14 which is the French or the UK sizing um, to like a Hobby Lobby or a Michaels and you wanted to have it put in a ready-made frame, they're not going to have a 10 by 14 mat available for you because our standard sizings are the 11 by 14. So you'll have to have a custom mat fit each and every time. So I'm very glad that recently they did introduce that 11 by 14 inch sizing and I'd recommend that you got that over the 10 by 14 just because I feel like the proportions are a little bit more balanced and for convenience it's going to be so much easier for you to go and have your artwork framed. The price on this paper is going to vary depending on the format that you get. Again, keep in mind it's going to be the same paper inside. But for the block, it's going to run you about $42 or so on dickblick.com or Jerry's Artorama. That's the sale price, but these prices are always subject to change, but that's the current price right now. And the pad is going to run you about $19 or $20 bucks sometimes, depending. Now, keep in mind that the blocks do contain 20 sheets of paper and the pads have 12 sheets. So, you know, it kind of works out a little bit. If you like the convenience of working on a block so that you don't have to tape your paper down, um, then it might be worth it for you. But in general, I think I like the pads or the sheets better because I often worry about how the sizing underneath could be affected. If you like to work in a lot of heavy washes, to the point where the paper starts to buckle a little bit, and that will happen with 140 pound paper, then you are dampening the paper, the sheet underneath as well some, and maybe even the sheet underneath that. And I'm concerned about how dampening it, letting it dry, dampening it, re-letting it dry, can affect the sizing over time uh, to, the, to the sheets underneath. So that's something that I did want to take note of. So let's get into some of the specifications to this paper. This is 140 pound or 300 GSM, and it is 100% pure cotton, which is excellent. Cotton paper is the best quality watercolor paper that you can absolutely get, and I always recommend it for the serious artists. Some of the claims on this paper is that it's natural white, cylinder mold, the same French paper mill since 1492. It's acid free. 
The paper is ideal for watercolor, gouache, ink, acrylics, drawing, and printmaking. Strong enough to handle multiple washes of color, um, mask fluid, scrubbing, and artist tape without damage. The sur the surface is gelatin sized, gives each fiber a consistent feel and absorbency. So gelatin is an animal product. It's a byproduct of the meat industry. If you are a vegetarian or a vegan, that is something to keep in mind. Now, some of the claims on this paper specifically that I want to question is that it is strong enough to handle mask fluid scrubbing and artist tape without damage. The hot press surface, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I dispute that claim. I don't think that that is true. So the surface is very delicate and you know a delicate surface is typical for 100% cotton paper but this is pretty extreme. Just running my hand across the outer surface of the paper will cause it to fuzz up some. Forget lifting and scrubbing and mask fluid uh, because those things are going to be very damaging. Erasing, any of those working characteristics that you might use um, this paper is very, very fragile. While it is incredibly smooth, it also has a slightly fuzzy texture that reminds me a little bit of a peach. And it is noticeable. It's absolutely noticeable, especially when the watercolor is wet. It does tend to go away a little bit as it dries, but there is kind of a fuzzy, grainy texture to this paper. And the more working that you do to the paper, meaning the more erasing, the more you rub your hand across it. Maybe you've applied some mask fluid and you've rubbed a rubber cement pickup across it. That texture, that fuzziness kind of becomes more and more prominent. The drying time on this paper, I found the drying to be incredibly quick and slightly uneven. To me, the drying looked a little bit more like a student grade kind of wood pulp or a cellulose fiber paper. Um, I was a little bit disappointed in how the paint dried on the paper. And something else that I wanted to mention is the layers. I felt like I could not get as many layers on this paper as I could on their traditional cold press paper. Their cold press has a nice texture and it really accepts the paint very well and allows you to layer the paint and glaze pretty much indefinitely. My issue with this paper was that I found that it seemed to gum up quite a bit. The, it, I could only get very limited layers before I noticed that it was sitting on the surface of the paper in somewhat of a chalky like way. So here is this um, gingerbread cookie painting that I did and I'm pleased with how it came out but you can kind of see in some of these areas and even feel that slightly fuzzy peach like texture. Um, not that the paper itself has any like um, you know nooks or crannies like tooth to it but just a little bit fuzzy. Um, and again if you just rub your hand across the surface of it it seems to start to peel up a little bit. If you look in some of these areas, like on the scarf, I only got maybe three layers before it started to look a little bit chalky, a little bit gelatinous almost. I could just feel with my brush that that paint was really feeling thick on the surface of this paper. And it seemed to, it seemed to me that the paper was just not accepting the paint. It was just sitting on the top, really, more than more than I'm used to. So I really wasn't pleased with it. And I have to say that I've never produced a piece of artwork with this paper for its intended purpose of watercolor that I've been truly, truly happy with. I've always noticed that there's been some unevenness, some inconsistencies, that delicacy to the surface. And again, I felt like I couldn't get enough layers. Here around the shadowed areas, even though I used proper technique, and I wet out the area first and then added some of the shadows in, I still felt like I got hard lines. And um, that's not typical for me. You know, I'm not a beginner at watercolor. I know how to avoid that problem. But again, the way the paper seems to dry and the paint seems to sit on the top, I think that it creates that. Being that this is a hot press paper, it will stain. That's typical of a hot press paper. It does have a tendency to stain more, so I'm not faulting this paper specifically for that, but just something that I wanted you to keep in mind. Now, 
here, um, I wanted to show you the exact same painting that I did on this Strathmore watercolor journal. This is student grade paper. This is wood pulp and cellulose fibers, I believe. And, if, and it's actually a cold press, and I think it came out so much better. The cookies, if you look side by side, I mean, this paint looks more vibrant on this paper. It, it even looks smoother, ironically, because the paint kind of sits on top and looks a little bit streaky almost on this paper. Just side by side, I mean, I feel like the Strathmore um, 400 series student grade paper outperformed this paper in terms of looks. Now, would I sell this painting? You know, it, obviously not. It's in my watercolor journal and it's not something I would sell anyway. It was just for fun. But this is obviously going to degrade over time. This isn't archival quality like this is. But just look at the difference. I mean, exact same colors, exact same technique, and the student grade paper, in my opinion, outperformed the artist grade paper in this fashion. And look at that kind of fuzziness. You can see it a little bit. Look how much smoother and brighter it would appear there. So, and the scarf as well, you know, these are just areas that my eye immediately goes to. And I noticed it right away as I was working on the surface. It's just the same issue consistently that comes up over and over again with this paper. And how delicate that the surface really is. I just, honestly, I don't like to give Arches a bad review because they are my favorite watercolor brand, per, uh, watercolor paper brand, particularly their cold press is my standard. But I'm just not happy with this one. I'm just not. I have to be honest with you guys. Now, for watercolor, I did want to mention that this paper does do exceptionally well for colored pencils. And that is what I have been using it for mostly and to use as an archival substrate for my pastel ground. So if you like to use a pastel ground in a jar or maybe you like to mix your own and a high density foam roller, that little bit of peeling issue and fuzziness is no longer an issue at all because that acrylic based product rolls over it and seals all that down. So it's not going to lift back up after it's been sealed down under a coat of acrylic uh, pumice gel or something of that nature or a pastel ground. So will I use it for that? Absolutely, I'll get use out of it for that and I may even repurchase it for that. But for its intended purpose as a watercolor paper, I have to say I am disappointed. All right, so real quick, before I let you guys go, you know that I never like to end a video on a low note, and I never like to give a negative review without recommending something else in its place is as possible as an alternative. So here's what I'd recommend to you instead. If you were looking for a really good hot press paper that had the same specifications, 100% cotton, acid-free, and archival, I would really steer you toward the Strathmore 500 series premium hot press ready cut watercolor paper. These come in a variety of sizes that are already cut for you. They're the standard size sheets that are ready for many um, typical frame and mat sizes. So you never have to worry about, you know, can I find a frame or a mat that's going to fit already cut and not have to pay extra for custom framing. They've got you covered there. I happen to have the 8x10 size here, but I also buy the 11 by 14 size. It is 140 pound, 300 GSM. And it is a nice smooth paper. The drying time is much more even on this. I get many more layers on this. It has a slight bit more texture. Like I said, it's not quite as smooth, but in terms of the finished painting, I think you'll get such a better result with this. This is also not as fragile, this paper. So you kind of get two reviews for one here. Um, but this paper I found, it, it, most hot press papers are going to be incredibly fragile. But this one does hold up to a little bit of lifting and working, erasing and masking fluid, things like that. And again, doesn't have that problem with the fuzziness or the chalkiness of the paint sitting on the top. So this one is far superior in my opinion. And I think it's right around the same price point. I could be mistaken on that, but... This would be the alternative that I would recommend in its place.
So I did want to thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick review. If you did find it enjoyable or you got value from the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up on your way out and subscribe for more videos in the future. And I will see you guys in the next one. And as always, have a great day. Bye.